In this video, Gina and I are going to use our reflector oven to bake a simple yet very delicious French Acadian dessert known as Poutine a True. Hmm. Keep watching. So my wife Jean and I are car camping in Kushbequack National Park, which is in New Brunswick, Canada. And Kushbequack National Park is located just outside the village of St. Louis de Kent. And the area all around us is rich in the history and culture of the Acadian people. In fact, the village of St. Louis de Kent is famous for the origins of the Acadian flag. But the other thing it's also famous for is the birthplace of the poutine a true dessert that we're making tonight. We became aware of the poutine a true dessert when we had stopped into one of the small restaurants in town that was basically a, a small pizza place, but they had a unique dessert that we had not seen anywhere else. In fact, I think it's the only restaurant maybe in the world that serves this. So we spoke to the owner about it and he explained what it was all about and what it was, what, how it was made. And I went home and did a little research and found that there is a recipe and I will sh share that recipe with you in the show notes below on how to make this dessert. So that's what Jen and I are going to do tonight is we're going to put this dessert together and show you how it's done. And then we're going to cook it in our reflector oven next to the fire. So we're going to start off with uh, putting the ingredients together. Now Gina and I have put some of this together ourselves and uh, Gina is going to go through a little bit about what the ingredients are and I'm going to give her a hand putting this together. So say hi Gina. Hi from Gina's Master, Master Chef Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay now I'll just pan down to the food and we'll go to work from here. All right. All right so what do we have? Well, I put the dry ingredients together at home, and in the dry ingredients, there's white flour, baking powder, salt, and sugar. Okay. Now, it wants us to cut in a tablespoon or 15 ml of uh, butter or lard or margarine. So, because we're camping, the best I've got is margarine. So, I'm assuming in the original recipe, the it would have been lard or butter. They wouldn't have had margarine 100 years of ago, of course, right? Of course. And um, there are two recipes that we came up with for poutine true. Both originated in this area of New Brunswick. The basic difference between the two is for a sauce, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And in the sauce, one uses molasses and the other one is just brown sugar and water. And we're going to be using the brown sugar and water one when, when we get to that point. But to start with, we have to create a pastry dough. The, now, Gina's using two knives. If you had to have a pastry knife, that would work as well. You could use a fork or you can get right in there with your fingers. It all works together. The idea is to come to as crumbly a pastry as you can, as if you were mixing a pie pastry or similar to a bannock. And that's probably a good point as well. What we'll end up with, and you can tell from the ingredients, is it'll be a little bit like a pastry dough would be, and a little bit like a bannock dough would be. There's a similar ingredients, it's just the, um, I think there's no baking powder in this at all. Is there? Is there a yes, there is. Oh, there is a little baking powder. So you don't get baking powder in, in a pastry dough, of course, but you do in a bannock. But there's less than there would be in a bannock because this doesn't rise up and become very thick. It's quite thin, but it is a bit more... Uh, pastry-like. More, more pastry-like. Yeah, it's hard to explain, but you'll be able to see as we go along uh, what it will look like. So. I'm using a wire whisk because I'm not good. I, I left my yeah. pastry cutter at home. Yeah. And... Yeah. When I first started cooking at Home Ec, they taught us to cut in lard using two knives. I've lost that skill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's not something like, yeah, using two knives is not something you, if you do, if you have the choice. <laughs> if you don't have it, there's not anything else you can use, that's when you use two knives. But of course, like I said, you can get right in there with your fingers if you don't mind getting your, if your fingers are clean, you don't mind them getting a little doughy. So how's that looking so far? Is that all the butter that goes in? One tablespoon. Well, that's not a lot, is it? Oh, what I've done is cut this recipe down because we don't want to have 12 poutines. Right, okay. We, we've eaten poutines for weeks. Right, yeah. So the recipe, we'll give you the full recipe in the show notes, but for what we're doing tonight, since it's just the two of us, is we, we cut it down to about a third, something like that, a quarter. quarter? A quarter. A quarter. quarter of the size, okay. So I have my dry ingredients in there, I've cut in my lard, and now I'm going to add my milk. All right. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's starting to look like 
like pastry dough, I guess. Is there any hints on how much to work it? Like how long to, like with a pastry dough, you don't want to... Till it's doughy? Till it's doughy, I guess, yeah. So some of this, of course, is like, there's, there's no classes, there's no videos that we know of on anybody making this. Uh, there may be videos, I just didn't, didn't happen to find it. So we're kind of going by what we experienced in the restaurant with the, the poutine a true that was served at the restaurant. I have no illusions that ours is going to turn out as nice as, as his does, but uh, here we go, yeah. It's starting to come together. So what we'll do, I think, is we'll take a minute, we'll cut away as we work this together, and when it's worked into, what, a, a ball, I guess, like a pastry ball, then we'll bring it back and take you to the next step. So I've cut in the butter and I've mixed in the milk and the recipe says to mix the ingredients together well, which I've done and uh, I've ended up with a ball of dough that's not too wet, not too dry. It feels a lot like pie pastry like, dough to like me. Like pie pastry. One of the things we're, we're kind of assuming based on um, what the end product we know looks like is that you would work this more than you would a tea biscuit or a bannock, maybe even more than a, than a regular pastry. You want pastry. the ingredients yeah, to Yeah, you want the gluten well. to take effect and, and to get quite, not tough, but you don't want it to fall apart, I guess is the, is the way to say it. Okay. Correct. So the next step is to divide the dough into the number of poutines you're going to make. So we're going to make four. I'm going to divide our dough into quarters and to roll each section out into um, some recipes say a circle, some recipes say rectangle shape, 5 to 6 inches, 12 to 15 centimeters in diameter. Did you want to put the other ones on here, the ones that uh, you're not doing right now? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll roll one out and uh, take you to the next step and then we'll do the other three off camera. So we're using, what are we rolling these out on? We're going to use par um, parchment paper um, because <laughs> we are outdoors and um, yeah. I'm a clean freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I at home you would use whatever you have, a cutting board or uh, you know, type of a thing, I guess. Parchment paper works well. It's like wax paper, except better in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. Yeah, so it goes quite thin, I think, doesn't it? It does. I think it wants us to roll it into uh, uh, five or six inch diameter. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe a quarter of an inch. I think less than that, closer to a sixteenth. Hard to get a good shape going with the. Uh, I'm trying to do the first one off camera. That's looking good. That's looking good. So as Gina rolls this out, the concept here will be to create a ball. So we're going to be putting the ingredients that we have, and we'll talk about those ingredients that, in a second, in the center of this, and then folding them the edges up over each other and uh, creating like a little ball of ingredients on the inside and uh, then we'll go to the next step so you, you can see you, you have to get it out quite thin that looks pretty good yeah okay so. okay I don't know if we should make it thinner we won't get a lot of ingredients in there will we nope. but that's okay I mean very really small poutines yeah. small put poutines And the parchment paper will make it nice for uh, being able to lift it off of that afterwards, yeah. Oh, yeah, it lifts up. Look at that. Yeah, that's perfect. Very nicely. Yep. All right. And uh, now we've uh, prepared our fruit mixture. So what, what do you have here in, in this mixture? In this mixture, I have a cut up baking apple. I've used a Macintosh apple. There are dried cranberries, dried raisins, golden raisins, and local blueberries. Yeah, I've just picked a few blueberries. So one of the things that uh, we know from historically, apples and cranberries would have been what's available to them in the area, although it wouldn't have been too difficult for them to get raisins on trade. But we believe that it's likely they could have used any fresh fruit or what was in season at the time. And since blueberries are in season here, we thought we'd throw in a, a few blueberries. It would give it a bit of a juiciness along with the apples. But I don't think it'll take a lot to fill those up, will it? Not a lot. Not a lot. The challenge will be getting it closed over the top, and I think. And you know what I need? Do you I need, need a little bit of water. To, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, a little water to close it up. All right, I'll get that. Up. 
actually have a little plate here I can put some water on. A bowl. I have to get a little water in that from the water bottle. So what it wants us to do is to moisten the edge of the pastry just a little so that it will stick. And if this works, I really feel like a master chef. <laughs> you are a master chef. <laughs> I think bugs don't go aren't part of the recipe, are they? No. So let's. Uh, Gina is a great cook. I am a rank amateur, but uh, I have made these before, and I can tell you this is a bit of a challenge for someone who hasn't done it before. Not impossible. I mean, you. It's as you can see, it wasn't all that hard. A little bit of water helps holding it together. And don't overstuff them. And don't overstuff them, um, that's the biggest when thing. When you add the water, the dough does become quite sticky. Yeah, and that's the point, right? To hold the edges together? Yep. Okay. So, this is, is that, the underside. Which side is that? That's the underside? We're and there's to, the top. There's the top. All and right. what it asks us to do is to carefully cut a hole in the center of the dough at the top. I've seen some of these where they've cut across. Yeah, adding something to it there. But yeah. I've just cut a little round hole. And you will slit. see what the hole is for later on. So we're going to do the rest of these now off camera and we'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, so here are the four poutine trues and the sometimes anglicized, people just call them puttons, but the four poutine true ready to go in the uh, toaster oven or toaster oven, reflector oven. Now I have a uh, oven thermometer that you would use in your home oven. I've not used it with the reflector oven before. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. And the reason I want to try and do that is because it is difficult to judge with a reflector oven how hot it is inside. It's mostly done by experience, guessing a little bit, and uh, just watching to make sure they don't burn. Because this is supposed to cook, Gina, what was the temperature? 375. 30 minutes. 375 for 30 minutes. So if you're doing this in your home oven or if you have a, uh, well we have a, a, do a Coleman folding oven that goes on top of our Coleman gas stove, but we wanted to try this reflector oven. 375 for 30 minutes. I suspect this is going to cook much faster, but what I'm going to have to try and do is keep it back far enough from the fire that, that it doesn't cook too fast. So goes in nicely. So what I'll do now is I'll reposition it in front of the fire and show you when we have it there. All right, there's the fireplace here in the campground that uh, they give us. It's a nice rounded one. This thing can throw a lot of heat, especially through that open door where we can feed the feed the wood in. You can see I have stacked my wood somewhat vertically and that's intentional because what you would really want to have is a good hot somewhat vertical fire when you use a reflector oven. You want that to produce as much heat and much radiant heat and radiant heat comes from taller fires like a teepee fire. So that's kind of what this is meant to imitate is a teepee fire. And uh, okay so now I'll move the reflector oven to position then I'll have to move the camera around so we can look at it from the other side. This is where things get a bit tricky trying to estimate or guesstimate I guess the right heat and the right amount of time so let me put that in position I'll start about uh, right now I'm gonna say I'm um, eight maybe ten inches probably closer to eight inches I guess from the front of the fireplace and uh, I'm gonna reposition the camera around the other side so you can see what's taking place but uh, I will be moving quickly to make sure that I, I don't burn these things so I've re repositioned the camera so that you can see into the reflector oven with the poutines. I think they're starting to puff up a little bit, Gina. They're not meant to puff up a lot. It's not like a tea biscuit or anything that really rises and gets a lot bigger than it is before it starts to cook. But these do look like they're getting a little bigger than they were originally. 
we're having some difficulty judging the heat. I do have an oven thermometer in there, but where it's positioned in the front corner, I know that's not the hottest spot. The hottest spot is pretty much dead center where the put Putina trues are sitting right now. So we're going to do some guesstimation and just keep an eye on this. Uh, we'll have to move them in and out according to the heat. And of course, my fire now is starting to die down. I'm going to have to put a few more sticks on it to make sure I maintain a, a good heat source going. So what we'll do is we'll continue to monitor these things. And when we feel that they're ready and take them off, then I, I'll give you a better uh, idea of how long it took. But anyone who's cooked with a fire knows that it's hard to give you very black and white guidelines on to um, what how hot a fire, how you know how long it's going to take, and that type of thing. So I'll bring it back when we're just about ready to take them off the fire. Okay, folks, this took a little longer than we had anticipated. It's always hard to judge, but you can see that uh, we have them ready now. They're a little bit browned on top, but that's okay. That's the way that they are when we have them in the restaurant as well. I do apologize if you hear any background noise. Because we're losing light so fast here, I had to turn on the Coleman Lantern. So what we'll do now is go on to the next step. If, if you take those, put one in each bowl, I'll move this out of the way, maybe like this. Perfect. And then we can bring that back down. Now, so, while the, the Putins were bring them one down true, here. was baking, I was busy back at the stove making a syrup. And apparently the syrup is the secret. So we just noticed that the little hole that we talked about making um, could probably be just a little bit bigger, do you think? Just to get the syrup probably, in? Yeah. yeah. See if I can't open that up a little bit. So good, uh, good lesson here is to make sure your hole is a little bit bigger than we made it. Maybe the size of a, not as big as a dime, but you know. Oh, sorry, apologize. There, that should work. So this is just a brown sugar, water, and Butter? No. Brown sugar and water. Brown sugar and water. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Now, when we go to this restaurant that I mentioned, uh, they dress it up all nice and fancy with some powdered uh, icing sugar. sugar and things on top of it, but uh, not necessary. I think they put a strawberry on the side. Bet you this would be delicious with maple syrup. Oh, maple syrup. Now, how Canadian is that, right? maple syrup in, in your dessert. Do not want to at all second guess the Acadian people. This is their specialty. However, I suspect if they had maple syrup, they probably used it. Maybe. Other recipes I've seen have called for a molasses and water syrup. And apparently you can eat these hot or cold. We've only ever had them hot. Yeah, that's true. At the restaurant. Yeah, that's right. Oh. The ants are enjoying it too. Goodbye. I, d I didn't think you'd get all that sauce in there. I think there's enough. It's always enough. Always enough. Alright, so what do we, we'll just set up right here on either side of the table. Is that be good for supper? Sounds good. Yeah. Or side by side. Oh, side by side even. Okay, folks, I'm just going to move the camera a little bit. Uh, test these delicacies out. I'll bring one up close to the camera for people to see. So here is what our finished poutine a true looks like. You can see it's a little pastry, just nicely browned on top. The hole in the center where Gina poured in the brown sugar and water syrup. Now it's just time to test it and see how it came out. Broken up one. Oh, you broke one up from me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I thought oh you did it. Show. Oh, I see. Show what the inside oh, looks like. Yes, I wasn't going to cut up your food for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that worked. That came up. <laughs> oh, man. Is that good? That's nice. Is it hot? We were a little, it's very hot. We were a little concerned. It took us, what, 15, 20 minutes maybe in the reflector oven? 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. The reflector oven, we have noticed, cooks things faster than the recommendations you would use for a home oven. My guess is, just based on looking at how it works, is that there's a convection taking place because we can see 
sometimes a little bit of smoke or heat being drawn in and, and drawn to the back of the oven and out again. So it works more like a convection oven than a, than a regular standard oven, and I suspect that cooks things a little faster because this is nicely cooked. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I think next time I put a little more syrup in. Mm. <clears throat> I find it a little dry. Mm. Yeah, just a little bit more of that brown syrup, but it, it, it's pretty much like the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh my goodness. I don't want to stop eating to do a wrap-up, but I have to, so give me one second. Now if you can see that, the pastry with the apples, cranberries, raisins, and blueberries inside, and then the simple brown sugar and water sauce. Gina commented that um, she probably would have made a little bit more sauce so that there was a little extra sauce kind of running down the sides or running out of it when you opened it up. But that's a judgment. You can always have a little bit more sauce. You don't have to use it, but have it on hand is nice. Look, that, that was so simple to try, so simple to make. The challenge for us was using the reflector oven and trying to get that right. But I think we did okay. We've, we've got a fair amount of experience with the reflector oven now that, uh, I, well, we got it right. All right, that's all I wanted to share with you is this wonderful French Acadian dessert, which was created right here in this region of New Brunswick, and share this with you and, and suggest you give it a try. If you know of this dessert, please let me know in the show notes or in the comments below that you've had it before. If you make it, if you make it differently, I'd be interested in knowing what variation you do. If you haven't heard about it, but you want to give it a try, let me know how it works out for you. All right, here in the fading light with the gas lantern going beside me, it's time for me to close down and finish my dessert. So until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.